Welcome to the Ohio Arts Council's Rife Gallery. This is a programming series for our current show, Watercolor Ohio 2022. This exhibition is produced and circulated by the Ohio Watercolor Society. And today we're thrilled to present artist Yuki Hall. As a brief reminder, everyone tuning in today is in listen only mode. So please feel free to utilize that chat function to ask your questions. We'll be sure to get to those during the Q&A portion of the hour. Next, live captioning is available and you can access that by clicking on the closed caption icon and selecting show subtitle. Also, please keep in mind that because we're presenting from separate locations, there may be some variation of bandwidth. So if one of us freezes up or the sound fluctuates, thanks in advance for your patience. And lastly, everyone, to get you a little bit comfortable, please go ahead and click on that chat function to say hello and let us know where you're tuning in from. Okay, thanks everyone. And now to you, Yuki. Well, thank you, Kat. Um... Before, um, before I start, I would like to thank Ohio Arts Council and uh, the Rife Gallery for inviting me to be uh, part of Watercolor Ohio 2022 artist talk. Uh, special thanks go to Amy, Kat, and Anya for helping me prepare this presentation. Um, I would like to start my presentation by uh, talking a little bit about my background. I was born and raised in downtown called uh, Nihonbashi in Tokyo, Japan. It is a business district in the center of Tokyo and my neighborhood looked just like this photograph uh, with many small businesses and restaurants. As I was growing up, uh, I loved reading books and some of those books were uh, popular cartoons and the girls' magazines. Uh, I have fond memory of turning pages and uh, get fascinated about the visual images that, uh, that were offered. I also enjoy drawing. So sometimes I drew those cartoon characters I had my education up to high school in Japan and then uh, immigrated to the United States in 1980 and continued my education attending a college. Uh, I went to the University of Maryland and I received a bachelor's of science degree in psychology. Uh, later, I moved to Dayton, Ohio and earned the second degree in mechanical engineering from the Wright State University. After graduating from the Wright State University, uh, I had a career as an engineer and worked in the automotive industry. Although uh, art did not take any part in my education or career choice, and I did not start painting until later years, um, as an adult, I held many uh, arts and craft type hobbies, uh, including Japanese flower arrangement, uh, weaving, stained glass, and cloak making. In the summer of 2006, uh, I took a beginner's watercolor class at the Rosewood Art Center in Kettering, Ohio. Uh, this was the very beginning of my journey with watercolor painting. Uh, my teacher was Leonard Williams. Uh, I'm sure many of you know him. Uh, He's a signature member of the Ohio Watercolor Society also. Uh, 
uh, Leonard was a very kind and dedicated teacher. And I uh, studied under him for several years. Um, I am deeply uh, grateful to him for much of my uh, foundational knowledge and skills in watercolor painting. After taking classes at the Rosewood Art Center, um, I further advanced my skills by taking workshops from many different artists uh, and watching instructional DVDs and reading art books. Over the course, um, I was influenced by many artists, including uh, one of the old masters, John Singer Sargent, who is playful, confident, rush mark. Another artist I was deeply uh, influenced, especially at the, uh, the early stage, is um, a British artist, David Curtis, for his sensitivity and his ability to uh, create such delicate um, mood and atmosphere of the scene. Also an Australian watercolorist, David Taylor, for his masterful simplification of the subject matter to uh, create impressionistic work of art. Um, I actually uh, had a privilege to take his workshop in Wisconsin in 2009 and 2011. Lastly, uh, Aval Castanet from Uruguay for his use of a powerful tone of value pattern and his uh, fluid use of medium. Uh, having discussed about artists I was influenced by, I am now going to talk about my uh, painting process. Um, some people tend to think because I paint rather loosely that I paint mainly based on my instinct. Um, it is actually not the case. Uh, I spend a significant amount of time in preliminary study, working on design, composition, especially uh, tonal value pattern. These are some samples of my uh, tonal value studies done on sketchbook. Uh, I use different kinds of tools, pencils, markers, chalks, uh, watercolor paints. By doing the study, I can work on the composition and design and tonal value before actually I, st I start painting. Around 2013, I also started doing a small monochromatic painting as a prelim preliminary study. Uh, monochromatic painting is a painting done with just one color. I use a one eighth of a sheet of watercolor paper, uh, which is about uh, seven by 11 inches in size. And I paint with dark, colors such as Payne's gray or sepia. By doing a small monochromatic painting as a study, um, I not only get to practice on shapes and tonal values, but I can also practice on edge qualities. Edge qualities um, basically means the outer shape of each brush mark created on the paper. And uh, it is a very important part in my painting because 
I do not like to paint in um, coloring in painting style. Uh, instead, I like to indicate shapes with uh, expressive brush marks. So I try to take a full advantage of different kinds of edge qualities uh, watercolor can offer, such as hard edge, soft edge, uh, broken edge, also called uh, dry brush, and roast and thumb. And I use them as means for expression. Um, these different kinds of edge qualities can be created by understanding the condition of the paper, how dry it is or how wet it is. Also, a concentration of pigment and water on a paintbrush. It also uh, depends on the speed of execution, how fast you move your paintbrush. So having practiced those uh, on a small monochromatic painting without worrying about uh, what color to use uh, beforehand makes it easier for me to produce uh, these desired edge qualities in my full color version of painting. Although uh, the main purpose of doing a monochromatic painting is a uh, preliminary study, I often find myself enjoying the process. Since it is a study and um, I do not have to work under the pressure of producing some final product, uh, oftentimes those small study pieces come out more intimate and fresh than uh, large Fuka version of paintings. This is a uh, monochromatic painting I did from a reference photo that I took in Detroit, Michigan. And I used uh, Payne's gray pigment. Even though it was a small monochromatic, monochromatic study, um, I like the way it came out. So I entered it into a magazine competition called Water Media Showcase. And it received an honorable mention and was featured in the Watercolor Artist Magazine April 2014 issue. The best part of this is that I learned that uh, painting done with just one color can actually compete with all other full colored paintings and receive a recognition. Another sample of monochromatic painting Detroit in sepia and I painted it in sepia pigment. This also received a honorable mention in the Water Media Showcase and was featured in the Watercolor Artist Magazine, April 2016 issue. So I have discussed about the uh, preliminary study I do before I start painting. Uh, so now I would like to show a sample of actual painting process step-by-step step using a cityscape painting I did before. This is the reference photo I used. It is the fourth street in Dayton. Um, I was mainly attracted to the scene because of the background, interesting background uh, with church dome, uh, and also um, the dramatic cast shadow on the right-hand side building. I did a quick tonal value study for this painting. 
um, I did in a sketchbook. Uh, it is about uh, five by eight inches in size. In this study, uh, I focused on the con notan. Notan is a Japanese word for a harmonious arrangement of dark and light. Uh, a good notan pattern creates an underlying skeleton structure in the painting and conveys energy and unity in the painting. So I focused on connecting dark shapes to create a strong notan pattern. This is the pencil drawing I prepared for on uh, watercolor paper. I used uh, Saunders 140 pound rough watercolor paper, uh, one photo sheet. I like to use rough paper over more commonly used cold press paper because it is easier to uh, create a dry brush effect on the rough paper. Dry brush effect is a technique to um, create rough broken brush mark on the dry paper. And the bumpy surface of the rough paper makes it easier to create it. This first step is the initial wash. I use a large mop brush to apply the loose overall wash. Um, the main purpose of the initial wash is to establish the sky and the earth. Uh, in this case, the sky and the road, because it's a cityscape. I apply the cool blue wash for the sky, uh, mainly on the upper section, and I blended it uh, with the yellow wash near the uh, horizon. The purpose of this is to uh, create a warm glow in a distant sky. Then I mixed a, a brownish gray and painted the road with a graduated wash. Lighter value on the top and it gets darker toward the bottom. Graduated wash is a, a, a wash that changes in the tonal value uh, or color gradually within the wash. And uh, if used effectively, it is a powerful technique to create a sense of uh, depth in the picture plane. I also put down some random uh, wash of earthy yellow color on the building and, um, and also some bluish accent colors to uh, counterbalance the dominant warm color temperature. The directional line on the road uh, were created by lifting colors with damp paintbrush while the uh, wash on the road was still wet. In a step two, I paint on buildings in gray color. Um, I treated the whole background as one shape instead of painting individual buildings in the background um, without much details. Um, I painted it with light tone of value so that it will recede in distance. I also pre weighted a pre uh civil area uh, on the background to create some soft edges. Then I indicated uh, roof shapes and the windows on the right-hand side building, including some soft edges and dry brush marks. In the next step, I painted the building on the left side in a dark tone of value. The idea was to uh, place some 
visual weight. Uh, this concept of connecting shapes is very important to me. Yuki, yes. you, you froze up for just a moment, so maybe 20 seconds back. Um, okay. Frozen, we lost your, your audio. If you could just dial it back just a, maybe a sentence or two, and we'll be able to catch up with you. On this, on this slide? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, I just kind of start from the top. Um, in this next step, step three, uh, I painted the building on the left side in a dark tone of value. Uh, the idea was to place some visual weight on the left side to uh, keep the visual balance in the whole painting. I also darkened the bottom of the building on the right hand side to anchor down the building to the road. and connect these uh, two big shapes, building and the road. This concept of connecting shapes is very important to me. Um, by connecting shapes effectively, I can create uh, unity and a visual pathway in the painting. Um, I started to pay attention to this concept after I started painting, uh, monochromatic painting. And I think that um, they really helped me to improve my design skills. In the next step, I painted uh, the cast shadow on the right hand side building and also the foreground. And I made a conscious effort to connect those dark shapes to unite the painting as a whole. In step five, uh, I painted the cars and figures and connected those to uh, the road with shadows. The final step is to um, add calligraphic lines to pull the painting together. I added uh, perspective lines on the road to draw viewers' eyes into the focal point. In this case, um, it's the bus in the distance. Uh, and also to create a sense of space. I also added power lines and light post to create interests. Um, the power lines going left to right also uh, serves to uh, connect the uh, buildings on the left and then buildings on the right, and those two big shapes. Um, as you can see, I use the, uh, the cool color on the figures and cars and then a the bus so that uh, it will uh, lead the uh, viewer's eye into the focal point. So uh, this is the finished painting, the 4th Street Dayton. So I have shown you my uh, typical painting process step-by-step. Step. Now I would like to share with you um, how my uh, painting style and the choice of subject matter evolved over years by uh, showing my uh, some of my past paintings in a chronological order. As, I'm, as I mentioned before, I started painting watercolor in 2006. I started at the Rosewood Art Center taking uh, classes. 
And this is a still life painting uh, of pears I did in 2007. As you can see, I was painting in more uh, toward the photorealistic uh, representational fashion back then. This is a painting of a historic Japanese farmhouse uh, I painted in 2008. Uh, I wanted to capture the sunlight hitting on the roof. As you can see, I was very much preoccupied with the small details. Uh, you can see that in the way that I painted uh, the woodwork under the roof as well as the exterior of the house. This is a painting of the bridge in the Cox Arboretum in Centerville, Ohio. I painted this in 2009. At this time, I was heavily influenced by the British painter, David Curtis. Uh, who I mentioned earlier, and started painting the subject matter in more impressionistic fashion, um, using the colors that are uh, not actually in the reference. Um, in a more, uh, more, excuse me, uh, more uh, impressionistic fashion, rather than a more realistic representational approach. In 2010, my painting, uh, Urban Nights Dayton, was accepted into the OWS exhibition for the first time. Um, unfortunately, I do not have the uh, close-up image of the painting, but I had the pictures from the opening reception that I attended. The gentleman in the photo on the right is Leonard Williams my teacher at the Rosewood Art Center. Uh, his painting was also accepted into the exhibition that year. Around 2011, uh, I started to be uh, more and more drawn to architectural subject matters and I painted many cityscapes. Um, I started to understand that um, in order to paint the atmosphere of the scene, it is important for me to create a sense of space on a two-dimensional watercolor paper. And I started to use uh, perspective techniques more effectively. For instance, um, I paint the distant object in lighter value, uh, oftentimes with some soft edges, um, application of directional lines, and using cars and figures, uh, light posts as perspective tools. I also began to um, understand that uh, different kinds of light effects can create a different kinds of mood and atmosphere. Uh, in the painting on the left, I use a strong tonal value difference to depict a dramatic direct sun uh, in the late afternoon. On the other hand, uh, in the painting on the right, I used a more narrow range of tonal value difference to create more uh, softer diffused light effects. This painting of a small historic museum in Taylor, Texas, where I visited, um, I decided to include this painting 
uh, in the presentation uh, because it shows that around this time, I started to understand the concept of confident brushstrokes and economy of brushstrokes. And I started to apply that into my paintings. I strongly believe that um, a watercolor painting will look much fresher and expressive if I can just indicate shapes with a few brush strokes and leave it rather than uh, delineating and overlocking with too many brush strokes. This painting, uh, Woodward Street, was my third accepted painting in the OWS exhibition. And I received the signature membership that year, 2012. In this painting, um, I strive to create an atmosphere of warm backlight, um, juxtaposed with a cooler foreground shadow. Around 2013, um, I began to do plein air painting occasionally um, when I get a chance. This particular painting was done at the Hebel Creek uh, wetland in Fairborn. Um, I painted about 85% of this on location and finished it with the details after I brought it home. Around 2014, I started to paint in a much looser fashion, and I painted many rainy day cityscapes. Uh, this is a painting of a main street in Dayton. Uh, I took a full advantage on the fluid quality of watercolor to uh, depict the reflection on the wet street. I think watercolor is a perfect medium for painting rainy day scenes uh, because of its inherent fluid quality. Uh, no other medium can do what watercolor does. This is another rainy day painting uh, I did in 2014 or the same street, uh, Main Street in Dayton. This painting received uh, an honorable mention in the sixth annual Water Media Showcase and was featured in Watercolor Artist Magazine, April 2015 issue. Uh, this painting titled uh, Commuters in Detroit has a very special uh, meaning to me because it was the uh, first painting that got accepted into a national show. Uh, it was accepted into the uh, Transparent Watercraft Society of America National Exhibition in Wisconsin. And later it was also Jewed into the uh, Watercolor West National Exhibition in California, where it received a uh, Founders Award. In this painting, I strive to paint the light by painting the shadow. As soon as I uh, paint shadow, the, the light starts to appear. This painting was also included in the Splash 16 Exploring Texture by the Northright Books.
This is a photograph of a street in Charleston, South Carolina. I visited there in 2016 with my uh, family and I really liked the um, interesting skyline with the roof lines and also uh, rows of palm trees that are adding interest to the scene. So I decided to paint it, but I wanted to uh, turn it into a rainy day painting. So this is what I painted, Charleston rain. Some people say that um, they want to paint a rainy day cityscape, but they can't because uh, they don't have a rainy day reference box. Of course, it is easier if you have the reference of rainy day scenes, uh, but I think you can also use references uh, of any weather conditions. Uh, you just need to use a little extra imagination and then take advantage of the uh, fluid quality of watercolor medium. Charleston Rain was accepted into the Transparent Watercolor Society of America exhibition in 2019. It was my third time being accepted into the exhibition. Um, so I was granted a signature membership to the organization. These photos are from the opening reception I attended in Kenosha, Wisconsin with my husband. I was truly honored to receive this recognition. In my journey with watercolor, there are a few paintings that brought me uh, a lot of mileage in, in terms of awards and recognitions. Um, Charleston Rain uh, is one of them. It was uh, selected as the fourth place winner in the 11th Water Media Showcase and was featured in the Watercolor Artist Magazine April 2020 issue. In 2021, I was invited to have a solo exhibit titled Moments in Time at the Canton Museum of Art. Those are some pictures from the exhibition. Uh, this was another milestone event in my journey with watercolor painting. This is one of my most recent paintings. Uh, I painted this from a reference photo that I took in 2018 during my trip to Italy. It is a street in Rome. Uh, in this painting, I try to uh, create the sense of space and the scale using cars and figures as perspective tools. Another painting from my Italy trip in 2018. It is a street in Milan. Uh, this painting is currently in OWS exhibit at the Rife Gallery. As you can see, the uh, reference photo has a dramatic cast shadow on the building on the right hand side. Um, when I see such a shadow shape on a summit building, I just have to paint it. I simplify the complex subject in a great deal and try to pull the painting together with uh, dark shadow shapes, connecting the dark shadow shapes.
In addition to a uh, uh, regular watercolor painting, I also enjoy sketching using uh, pen and wash technique. Pen and wash is done by a simple pen drawing and minimum amount of watercolor wash on top of it. It is a wonderful method to capture the essence of the scene quickly. And it is my preferred method of outdoor sketching. These are uh, some samples of my pen and wash pieces. I am uh, also an avid teacher and I have been teaching watercolor uh, as well as sketching uh, since 2013. It has been an important part of my growth as an artist. Uh, I have taught in various locations in Ohio, Indiana, and Missouri. I also teach internationally and taught a workshop in Tuscany in uh, 2019. And I'm scheduled to teach another one there in this coming September. And I'm very much looking forward to it. Uh, this concludes my presentation. Um, as I close, I would like to mention that I have a website where I post uh, recent artworks uh, and announce upcoming workshops and events. Uh, my website is uh, www.yukihofineart.com. Uh, you can also contact me by email. Uh, my email address is yukihofineart at gmail.com. Thank you very much. That was wonderful. Thank you, Yuki. Um, I think we have a little bit of time for questions. So if folks want to pop those questions into the chat, we'll pick them up. But uh, in the meantime, Yuki, you and I can go ahead and chat if you would like um, to stop sharing and then we can just chat uh, some things. Something that I was really interested in um, as you were talking is thinking about the intense growth that you've had in the trajectory of your your uh, fine arts career and i'm curious um just to give bearing for those that are watching give us kind of a day in the life uh for your studio practice like do you how how often do you paint uh and what does it look like feel like when you enter the studio how long are you there you know get, kind of paint paint a picture for us if you will yes um well, um, I try to paint as much as I can, uh, but I also uh, spend a lot of time preparing for uh, teaching classes. So um, if I can uh, paint just for myself um, two or three days in a week, that's a good week. And then, of course, you know, I have family. So um, those things, uh, just daily life things takes time. but. Uh, I like starting uh, in the morning and uh, and then get uh, a bulk of work uh, before I get tired in the afternoon. So uh, just try to put the painting uh, as first priority as much as I can. I love that. Um, we have a comment from Heather who said, wonderful, Yuki is now one of my inspirations. Um, and then we have a, a question that says, where do you see your watercolor journey in five years? Will you stay focused on architecture or explore other subjects? Um, I think I probably stay with the architectural subject matter because that's that's where my passion is. Uh, once in a while, I uh, dip in into uh, painting like a photo, some still life. Uh, but my, my love is in uh, architectural uh, painting. So uh, I think I should paint what I love to paint. 
So probably stick in with the architectural uh, subject matters, but I'm planning to uh, uh, kind of expand my uh, my horizon by uh, just using a little bit different techniques. Like I'm right now very much uh, interested in using more of granulation in the painting. So that's my uh, next uh, project, I think. Wonderful. We have another question that says, have you noticed your background in engineering helping you to develop your styles as an artist? Um, I uh, get asked that, uh, that question very often um, because people think, oh, uh, you can draw better because you're an engineer kind of thing. Uh, maybe, but I didn't really have the like a drawing training uh, in engineering school because I started my career later in my life. So uh, all we did is cat drawing, you know, computer aided. So I didn't really get to do the um, pencil and pen drawing. However, I think it's helping the, the way they I like to do things a uh, systematic way. So, and then especially uh, it's helping a lot in uh, my teaching, preparing for, uh, you know, curriculum so that I can uh, plan things in a logical fashion. Wonderful. Um, Let's see here. We have a, a few more questions. Um, Charlie says, I understand you need to be good at drawing to create a good painting. Were you good at drawing from the beginning or did you train in certain way in a certain way to be so good at drawing? Um, I did take some uh, drawing class. Uh, at the Rosewood Art Center. Uh, I started everything at the Rosewood Art Center. Uh, it's a wonderful place to uh, learn art. And I did take several classes uh, and we did mainly uh, like a still life drawing, but it trains you, uh, your skills to, to see and transfer that to your hands. Um, and, but I kind of jump into painting because uh, uh, I think I asked Leonard, uh, like, how many years do I have to take drawing class before I can actually paint? And then he said uh, something like, just start. <laughs> so you learn as by doing it. And uh, of course, my, my drawing, when I started painting uh, Cityscape, my drawing was, wasn't as, you know, as good as it is now. So, um, you know, my suggestion to people who are trying to challenge cityscapes, just draw. And the more you do, you just get better. I, I tend to agree with that. It, you know, it, how boring would it be if you were instantly great and there would be no journey? That's right, yeah. Yeah. Um, Rhoda shared that uh, they've, yeah, they've loved Yuki's art style and this gave me a peek into her method. Thank you so much for organizing it and thank you to Yuki for sharing. Uh, Jen, Sha Jen Souter, excuse me, Jen. Um, do you enter many Ohio-based shows or are you more national, international in focus? Well, if she certainly enters Ohio-based shows because that's what this show is. Yeah. Um, I'll let you answer the rest. Go ahead, Yuki. Yeah, um, yes, um, I do. And uh, I uh, enter to local shows like uh, Fairbona Association, uh, Western Ohio Water Care Society. And um, just sometimes I, uh, can't keep up with all those deadlines for entering, but uh, I, I'm still uh, active in local bases. Wonderful. Audrey would like to know if you've tried other media like gouache or acrylic. I have tried uh, pastel along the way um, because uh, I, uh, at that time, I belong to a, a art group. Uh, with uh, six or seven artists get together and then paint. And we had a, a teacher coming in and he was mainly a pastel instructor. And so I was kind of ins inspired. So uh, I tried pastel, I painted several pastel paintings, but I just missed water and paintbrush. So uh, I just 
put all my pesto tools away and I said I went back to watercolor. It's just my my first love and that's what I got to do. Great. Uh, June said, I enjoyed this very much. What are your favorite colors to create shadows besides Payne's gray and sepia? Please explain how you blend the colors when creating these shadows while keeping transparency. Okay, uh, Payne's gray and um, sepia, I only use them for uh, monochromatic painting. And uh, I do not use them for uh, full color paintings. My uh, my typical colors for using for the shadow is a uh, mixture of um, cobalt blue and a little bit of uh, brown matter. And depending, uh, depends on the, uh, depends on the mixture of that, I can kind of move to a little bit warmer side. Like if I put more brown matter, brown matter is basically kind of uh, brownish red. So I, um, I can change the color temperature within the shadow by uh, putting more brown metal or more cobalt. Um, I put the shadow on the area where it already has a color. So I try not to mix too many colors in my shadow because it gets kind of uh, dull. So I try to keep uh, my shadow mix uh, pretty pure. So cobalt is very transparent. Uh, brown matter is very transparent. So uh, it works well uh, on putting the shadow on the area that it's already paint has already had some color on it. Wonderful. Um, we have another question. What has the most challenging part of your watercolor journey been so far? And do you have any advice for starters? Um, I think, uh, the, of course, the challenge is that when, um, uh, when you do a watercolor, you know, like, especially at the beginning, the watercolor does not stay where you put it and people get frustrated. I got frustrated. Uh, but once I decide that, um, uh, I don't, you know, with the watercolor, you don't have to be perfect. There's no perfect watercolor paintings. I've never painted uh, perfect watercolor paintings that I love every part of it. Uh, so just, I think you just kind of relax. And um, main idea is to uh, understand the what, how the watercolor behaves. So like, I think I mentioned that uh, in the presentation that I need to know the condition of the paper, uh, how much, you know, liquid in my paintbrush. So once I started to pay attention to those things, and I can create the, the condition that watercolor does certain things, and I just let it do its own thing, and not worry about having a little bit of blooms here and here running the colors. So, um, and then that's that's the beauty of watercolor. So. Uh, don't get too uh, worried about making things exactly the way you plan. Uh, let the watercolor paint, but you have to do a lot of planning. So in my workshop, um, I tell my students that uh, if you can only take one thing from my class, um, take that preliminary study, the corner value study, monochromatic painting, those things are very, very important. Wonderful. Um, Enoch says, Yuki-san, do you sometimes incorporate Japanese sumi techniques into your painting? Um, I don't do intentionally. Uh, I have never taken uh, me a, a, a traditional brush, Japanese brush painting, uh, but uh, when I was in uh, elementary school, we had a class for the Japanese calligraphy that we do with uh, brush and um, sumi ink. Uh, we had to do that. And at that time, I wasn't all that excited about it. So I, now I wish I paid more attention to it. But um, it's kind of part of my bringing up. So uh, I'm sure it's... Um, affecting in uh, some indirect way in my painting. 
Wonderful. Uh, Joni would like to know what are your favorite tools, brushes, paper, easel, and can you talk about those tools? Sure. Uh, my favorite paper is Saunders. Uh, I think it's also called Waterford, uh, 140 pound rough paper. Uh, I like rough paper because I can do dry brush easily. And uh, brushes, um, I have to have a big mop. Um, I use a silver black velvet uh, big mop brush for the initial wash because initial wash, you cover a very, very large areas. So you really need a big moppy brush. Um, oftentimes when I uh, teach workshop and students uh, try to paint a large area with a small brush and then because of that, they have to go back and forth and then just kill the freshness. So having a big mop brush for the initial wash and then a large area is very important. Um, so I have mop brush and I also have a smaller uh, soft brush where I paint like a foliage, some organic areas like a, um, trees and things. Uh, and I also have stiff nylon brush. Uh, mine's are uh, Escoda Pola. Uh, they have very, very stiff pointed edge. So it's very easy to um, control. So those are the two kinds of brush, um, softer brush and uh, nylon stiffer brush for more details. All right, and I think this will be our last question. It's from Karen. Karen asked, when you began in 2007, did you start by drawing every day or what was your process in the beginning? And thank you so very much. Beautiful. Um, I, I don't think like I, I had a discipline to draw every day, but uh, again, then I, I started taking a class at the Rosewood and uh, uh, I painted at home also, and just uh, just practice. And, and and then also I, I started uh, reading lots of lots of books and watched DVDs. Um, and um, I think that was really important part because um, you know you can just learn by uh, painting one day when you go to class. You also have to practice at home and. Um, I think my suggestion is to uh, just find some artists that you like, uh, the, the style that you like, and just dig into it, you know, buy books, uh, or you can uh, rent from the library, uh, read them, and watch the DVDs. Uh, DVDs are excellent source of uh, learning. Uh, nowadays, you can just, you know, watch YouTube for free, so you don't even have to buy DVDs. Um, because those are really direct. You can learn by watching, and then later you practice. Um, so I didn't like a paint or draw every day, but uh, I probably did more than uh, more than some people. But it, it was fun. It, it was you know it was not like work. I I enjoyed it. So it was uh, it was like a source of energy. I I relaxed when I'm painting. Wonderful. All right. Well, I think that uh, that is going to wrap us up. I want to thank you again, everyone, for joining us for this artist talk by Yuki Hall as a part of our programming for the Watercolor Ohio 2022 exhibition. I'd like to give a special thank you to Yuki for putting together this presentation. Um, also to all of the presenting artists for making their wonderful work, as well as to the Ohio Arts Council's board the Ohio legislature and the governor who supports the OAC, this great space, and of course, Ohio artists. Thanks everyone, have a great day.